Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write the Game Engine from scratch. Previously we defined most of the data structures that we need when we want to import or generate 3D geometry and we also set up the primitive mesh generation and defined some functions that we can use to generate meshes. Today I would like to write the simplest one of those functions which will generate a plane for us. Okay, let's implement this first one to start with. Before writing this function, I would like to finish this one because there isn't much that we need to do to finish this function. All we have to do is to call one of these creator functions using the index of the type of the primitive that we want to create. And then later we need to process these vertices. Okay, here in create plane, I'll have a new lot group. And I would like to write another function that creates a plane and that would accept different kinds of parameters because I'd like to also be able to orient my planes and define their normals in which direction they are facing. Because later when I'm going to create a cube, I can just use six planes to construct my cube and that would be simpler. So I'm going to write a more specific version of this create plane function and then call it here. So right now I'm just giving this version of create plane one parameter, but this version will have a lot of optional parameters that we are not giving it here. That's why it appears to have just one parameter, but really it has a lot of parameters. First of all, it will return a mesh. First, I included using namespace math here so that we don't have to type math colon colon and then the type because we are in a CPP file anyway. I'll explain each of these parameters. The first one is a horizontal index and the second one is a vertical index. And this is just to tell this method in which access plane this plane should be created. So on default, we would like the plane to be on the X axis which is what this horizontal index means, and the z-axis, which is the second component of the coordinate system. And to make this more readable, I'm just going to create an enumeration that contains these axes as names. So this makes it more clear what we mean by these indices. You could also use an enum class. That's a new feature in C++ 11 and later. But I think they are just horrible. So I'm not going to use them. 
The next parameter in this method is flip winding, which tells the method in which direction the triangle should face. So if the flip winding is false, then we just use the right-handed coordinate system to point the normals. So they'll be, in this case, just pointing upwards. And when winding is flipped, then the normals will face down, which will practically flip the whole plane to the other direction. The offset is where we want to center the plane around. So the default is minus half in the x direction and minus half in the z direction, because the default is a plane that sits on top of x, z plane, and it's centered around the origin. The UV range is when we want to use a subset of the UV coordinate. For example, normally we use the UV range from 0 to 1. But when we are creating a cube, for example, each of those planes will occupy a subset of our UV plane. So with these ranges, I can tell this function where exactly to place this plane on the UV plane. And all this function does is to generate positions. And depending on how many segments that we have, it will generate a plane with that many segments. First, we are making sure that horizontal and vertical indices have valid values and that they are not the same. Here we clamp the value of the segments or the number of segments in each direction between 1 and 10. We obviously need at least one segment for a plane and this 10 is just arbitrary. I uh, just want planes that have a maximum of 10 segments and not more. But feel free to change this any way you want. And of course I need to write a clamp function. And the clamp function will go in our engine utilities. Here I'll add a math header. And I'm going to restructure how these math types and math is included in our common header. So this is our clamp function. And then let's see if I can use it here. Yeah, that works. Next, I'm going to calculate how big our step size should be because we are going to practically create a grid depending on how many segments we have. So these step sizes are for positions. And we need to define step sizes for our UV coordinates as well. And those depend on how big these ranges are for U and V directions. 
Here we are assuming that the width and length of this plane is one so that we can have this step size calculated this way. And then later we can multiply the positions by the size so that the plane will be the right size that the user wants. Here we will have the mesh data structure that we defined before. So we can put the positions here. The normals will be calculated by the vertex processing routines in the later stages and the tangents as well when we need them. And the vertex processing stage has some preconditions that I'll be discussing later. And one of those is that the UVs and the normals should be per vertex per triangle. So for each triangle that we have, we need to provide three UV coordinates. And that's why I'm having a separate UV array here, because when we construct this grid, the UV coordinates will be per quad. And after we calculate the indices, for each triangle, we can just put each UV for that index. Here I am taking a pointer to the first component in this position vector because the position vector in our case is a three component vector of X, Y, and Z. And because I want to index into this position, depending on what the horizontal or vertical indices are, I'm taking the address to the X component so we can do as if it's a three component array instead of a three component vector. And that way I can just write to the right component. And then we scale this position vector by the size of the plane that we want. So this determines the position of the vertices in the grid. And next we are going to determine the UV coordinates of the grid. So we are subtracting the V range from one because we want the V direction to be upwards instead of pointing downwards. So it effectively flips the V direction of the UV plane. This calculates the UV coordinates for each point on the grid that we just constructed. Next, we are going to try and calculate the indices of each triangle on this plane. So here we check that the size of positions is the same as the size that we would expect. And here I'm just having the number of vertices on the horizontal row so that I can use it to calculate the indices.
Now to compute the indices, instead of going for each row from the first vertex to the last vertex, we need to skip over the last column of our plane because we construct triangles between the segments, but not between the last column and the first column. So therefore I'm going to have a counter here that just increments for each row. First, for each corner of a quad that we are trying to split into two triangles, we are going to calculate the value of the index. Now for the second and the third index, if this flip winding is true, then we have to flip them and otherwise we use a counterclockwise winding. Okay, so this constructs the two triangles for us. And if we have more segments, it will create all those indices and triangles. And now we can check if we have the right number of triangles and indices. We have three indices per triangle and two triangles per quad. And the number of quads is just uh, horizontal count multiplied by vertical count. Next, we need to put these UV coordinates in the UV set, and we can use the indices to point to the right UV for us. That's pretty simple, it's just one loop. Okay, now we are done with this function. If we did everything correctly, it will generate a plane for us with the number of segments that we asked for. And well, this function just calls the plane with its default parameters. And here in create primitive mesh, whenever we ask for a plane, then it will call that function for us. The next thing that we need to do is to process these data that we got from plane into something that we can use in the level editor and after that in the game engine. So for that part, we need to do some processing as we stated here before. So one thing that we can already do is just to tell whatever comes next to calculate the normals for us, because remember we didn't do anything with normals here in our plane and we are not going to do that in any of these methods because we are going to write a function that calculates normals for us. So why do it here? Next, we are going to tell the pipeline to process the scene for us using this scene and uh, settings. And then we are going to ask it to pack all the data in the scene and then we can send it to the level editor to be further processed. Now it's time for me to go and powder my nose and I hope to see you next time when I'm going to continue and write these functions. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.